since they've had a packed house in here. Starting lineups are sponsored by Jeep. There is only one veteran UConn team. Five returners in the starting lineup. RJ Cole and Tyrese Martin, both of the preseason all Big East second team. Whaley, the co this here of UConn's reincarnation as a Big East program. You, of course, know all about the first go round in the Big East. And we are underway here in the new season. Packed house, Gantle Pavilion. UConn wins the tap and R.J. Cole, the veteran point guard, into the front court for the Huskies. Well, UConn's going to show Central that size does matter. And there are only so many teams in the country that are as big as UConn. And right away, well, high-low action down low to Adela Sonogo. And UConn off and running here in the new season and an inbound violation to boot. So the Huskies will get the ball back. And Nigel Scandalberry is telling his big, listen, Ola, calm down, relax. We know this is a weird spot for us to be. We're playing on the road, albeit in state, but this is, uh, when you walk in this gym and you see a, a, an NBA team disguised as UConn players. <laughs> in that play, run to perfection. Tyrese Martin, the two-handed flush, and 30 seconds in a four-point lead. It's important for Central is communication to start. Show up for your teammate, too. And the other thing is play with some confidence. There's a reason you're here. There's a reason you're playing the game. Nigel Scantleberry is the junior point guard from Rochester, New York. On a mismatch, steps back off the mark. Cole Skies for the board. Andre Jackson, terrific athlete, tied up on the floor. Let's see what happened after that first bucket, Donnie. Yeah, communication is so important on the wrong side. And, and Tyrese Martin is a strong guy. So when coaches say do your work early, that means get in front of him. He's just going to nudge you back there. There was really nothing impeding him to the basket. So a good start for UConn. Showing a little pressure here. As mentioned, Scantleberry, the six-foot point guard. Pulled a transfer from Howard, former MEAC player of the year. On Scantleberry. Here's an open look from McLaughlin from the wing. Comes up short. UConn all over the boards. And that's what UConn wants. One and done. They're going to dominate the glass. They're terrific at every position, defensive rebounding wise. You got to make them work a little bit. Sonogo alone inside, using his body against the wall. That's an aspect of this game that the staff is really proud of. He can put it down one or two times. Doesn't do too much with it. Straight line guy, use your size under control. Adama Sonogo, a sophomore from Bamako Mali. Here's Scantleberry trying to get into the paint, 15 feet away, and Central is on the board. But a lot of work, a lot of effort being put into that one-on-one -on -one move. Ball fires away from the top of the key. And that might have been a little bit of Scantleberry being excited that he knocked down a mid-range jumper over RJ Cole. You can't fall asleep. Scantleberry right up against the mid-court line. Kirshnan in the paint out to McLaughlin. Passes on the open look that time. Trey Mitchell, their leading returning scorer, knocks down the three. It's great basketball. Changing sides of the floor. You penetrate. The help comes. Next guy penetrates. Find an open man. Basic basketball. It's a central Connecticut state that does not return a player who averaged in double figures last season. Cole in the paint keeps it himself, and UConn on fire to start. Cole. For 6-1, he does a great job of using his size. Once he gets in front of you, kind of jumps back a little bit. Scandalberry had nothing to do there but play without fouling. Scandalberry against Cole on the floor. A little hesitation move. And there's a travel in the wow. corner against Christian. This is exactly what Danny Hurley wants Sonogo to do. Keep it simple over that left shoulder, putting it down on his own. And R.J. Cole, well, they're wondering where the score is going to come from. Remember, this kid scored over 1,500 points in two seasons at Howard before he got here last season. So he knows how to fill it up, R.J. Cole. Well, the scouting report on UConn is this. They return pretty much everything except their leading scorer from last year, James Bucknett. Sometimes other guys have an opportunity to step up. It reminds me of the year going into my senior year. Danielle Marshall left for the NBA, and we were a better team. 
Sonogo inside, and UConn is still perfect from the field. Sometimes guys kind of stand around, they can't come out of their, their shell, and now is an opportunity for these guys at UConn, now that Booknight is gone playing in the NBA, it's, it's a chance for different guys to be able to step up. Booknight, the 11th pick in the NBA draft of the Charlotte Hornets. Zach Newkirk, another one of the returners. There's 10 newcomers on this Central Connecticut State roster. Nice job by Jackson stepping into the passing lane. Couldn't corral it, though. Yeah, that and, shot clock should have yep. gone off. Andy Hurley yeah. calling for a shot clock violation, and they correct the oversight. Adama, we know him as a back-to-the-basket guy, but just a great seal. Across the lane there. Got a terrific touch. He can dominate if they give him the opportunity, and usually the opportunity means touches. He's getting them now. Three turnovers already against Central. Cole is thinking about firing away again. Backdoor feed. Martin along the baseline. And a little extra. You know, you see a guy how to play with that confidence. Again, give him an opportunity, and he's showing you he can make it pay off. You and I sat through their shoot around earlier today, Donnie. This UConn front line kind of resembles a football defensive line. They've got that kind of meat on it. I said, I, you know, just looking at the size of this team, they're bigger than three or four NBA teams. Average height about 6'6", maybe a little over. There's another turn. Number four for Central Connecticut State, Joe Ostrowski, the backup point guard, a walk-on just into the game for the first time, couldn't handle the errant pass. I know people say you don't have to be big and tall to be a good basketball team, but i tell you what, it helps. It doesn't hurt. <laughs> it helps. Huskies have been capitalizing off those Blue Devils turnovers. Six points off of them already. Inside for Sonoma, making eight points off of turnovers. What I like about that is they've been working with Andre Jackson to shoot that short three in the corner pocket. But just a great decision to throw it inside to a guy who's hot. And for Sonogo to catch it, couldn't dunk it, finishes it with the left hand. Perfect eight for eight to start. Newkirk is bottled up, kicks it out to Mitchell. Travel there, you gotta move the basketball. Trying to beat this UConn team off the dribble is not gonna do it for you. And UConn's showing you that because they're beating you with the pass. Thought about it there, Jackson. Sonoba might have gotten hit on the right hand, so he didn't want to miss. Finishes with the left. And this is a, a team in UConn that, yes, we talk about size, and we talk about athletic ability, but with those, you need unselfishness. You need understanding of what your teammates can do, putting them in a good spot, and so far they're doing that. Jalen Gaffney, 6'3", back, a point guard from Columbus, New Jersey, into the game for the first time. Here's Martin backing down, draws the foul on the floor. And then they go and post up their two guy, <laughs> Tyrese Martin, at 6'6". So you're getting a little feel for what UConn can really do across the board with whoever's on the floor for them. Well, right now there is a size advantage at all five positions. Martin coming off a curl and is deflected by Ostrowski. So if you're central, you know you're smaller, so pack it in a little bit. Now what you have to start doing is better communication, but maybe force UConn to try to beat you over the top. Isaiah Whaley has his pass deflected. Mitchell fighting for it in front of Patrick Sellers, picks it up. Love deflections. They'll be charting that, and that leads to a turnover now. See if Central can do something with it. Newkirk got it into the front court quickly. Here's Arian Danavi. Pass is deflected away by Andre Snotty. Lobbed it up out of the reach of Andre Jackson and out of bounds. So back-to-back -back turnovers for the Huskies. Andre Jackson, one of the best athletes I've ever seen at UConn, but even he, he can't catch that pass. I like the idea. That's just uh, that, that's a tough one to on the move like that. You know, that's an opening night. There's 10,000 people in here. We haven't played in front of fans in a while. Let's see what can happen. Still believe if you're central, run your stuff. You got to do it with the pass. This team is too physical. Even at the guard position, Chukon is so aggressive. 
Ostrowski to Newkirk at the top with the shot clock winding under 10. A little turnaround in the lane. Tough shot off the back. And Jackson clears the boards. Brings it all the way up himself for Polly An outside threat, no good. Sonogo still battling inside, but Denavi picks it up. Most guys, I would say, you know, I'll run up and down a few times, swing it, put it on the floor for Tyler Polly. I'm like, just let it go, man. 35% <laughs> free three-point shooter last year. Let it go. Go ahead. See how it feels when you get in there. That's his game. Biggie's sixth man of the year last year. Jackson steps in front of the pass. One-on-one -on -one with Newkirk right to the basket, and he'll shoot a couple. Spacing really is, is the key for a team like Central that's smaller and, and closing those gaps. Because essentially, these long players for UConn can guard a couple guys at once. So you gotta, you gotta show up for a teammate, you gotta meet the passes, all those small little things, the fundamental stuff you, you have to remember when you're on the road. That was the second foul on Zach Newkirk. Morgan for the Huskies, for 11, a cook, a cook. Nice hand for a cook, a cook. It was an injury plague season for him last year in scores. After a very impressive freshman season. Had a good game last year against Xavier on the road late. He ruptured his Achilles in 2020. And he was averaging six, about six and six, and almost three blocks before that Achilles injury. Last year was limited to seven games and 30 total minutes. Scantleberry, nice feed inside, and the foul is going to be on the floor. No basket. As Stefana Youngma drew the foul against Jalen Gaffney. Foul on zero, Jalen Gaffney. We talked to Danny Hurley today. He says, you know, if we can make shots, it would be, uh, you know, that could be the difference maker for us but when you're dominating in the paint maybe and, and you're doing it on the defensive end making those long-range shots it, it, it might not hurt you if you're missing them and this is what they do aggressive rj cole i mean across the board their guards have made a concerted effort this year to to just be more aggressive defensively and that takes the pressure off of your bigs behind you yeah they can block shots but you got to keep them in the game Andre Snotty got the forearm arm up a little bit on R.J. Cole, who nearly loses the handle here. Whaley hasn't gotten much action inside. He finishes nicely with the left hand. I love that he catches and doesn't play around with the ball. Just goes right to work over, over that right shoulder. Over the smaller defender. Easy basketball, simple. So much of UConn's damage coming inside. They scored the last 13 points. Scantleberry tries to turn the corner. Has to fling it up there and gets the roll with two seconds on the shot clock. That's what UConn, I think, could continue to do. Not, not just in this game, second half, but down the road. They can make teams just wear them down where they're getting those late shots in the clock because of their size, because they stand you up. Polly along the baseline, a cook with the put back. Cook, cook, cook. Welcome back, a cook, a cook. Kirsten is in trouble. Finds a Strowski, good ball movement here. Scantleberry from the corner. And you gotta knock down the open ones when you get them. If UConn makes a mistake, you have to capitalize, and that's the way to stay composed. Sometimes you get a little anxious because you got an opening. Knocked it down. Scantleberry stepping in front of that one. Off to the races, and the goaltend. Good hustle by R.J. Cole, but the ball is already up on the board. Two points for Scantle. He's been to the NCAA tournament a couple with UConn. They lost in, in the national semifinal. He's been there with FDU, with Creighton. He's on that great Creighton team. They won 27 games. I mean, Pat not only could recruit, but fundamentals, you're not going to learn from many better than that guy on that sideline over there. A self-described basketball lifer. First collegiate attempt by Samson Johnson is off the mark. Battle inside, and Pauline. Oh, there is your 6'9 
small forward, but probably more of a two guard and Tyler Polly mixing it up. And I think they want to see more of that from him this year. Can't just go out there and run three point line to three point line. You got to get in and defend. Polly doing some of the dirty work. Scantleberry has nine points already. He's been very good. The block of three is off. Cole to the floor, but it's picked up by Devontae Swetman, a 5'8 freshman point guard out of Boston. And I'm sure Danny Hurley will let his guys know about that. Look out. It's shorter than their coach getting an offensive putback. <laughs> a cook disrupted the first one on Yumbo with the putback. So here's Sweatman guarding Gaffney, a seven inch height advantage for Jalen Gaffney. See him backing him down around the corner, deflected but fouled. Gaffney took a bit of a hard fall. Just got to point out Patrick Sellers and all, all his coaching staff, Central Connecticut State. He's one of my favorite guys, Howie Dickerman was the head coach there. UMass, obviously this place, Hofstra, Creighton, under Greg McDermott, DePaul with Dave Lato, Greg Horinda at FDU. You talk about the stops, not only that, but the people he's learned from throughout his assistant coaching career. At Hofstra, he was an interim head coach, so technically this is his first full head coaching job in high school. St. Thomas Aquinas in New Britain, Connecticut. He was a head coach there too. He was an interim at Hofstra, but during the offseason. Yes. So this is his first. Right. This is his first game action. Yeah. Just a, a, a terrific teacher in general. And strong ties to Connecticut, as we mentioned, and to the Northeast Conference where Central Connecticut State plays. Another turnover and a foul. This one's going the other way against Krishnan. Foul the Blue Devils. Getting a lot of dribbling. Krishnan. It's tough. And it has to be some movement north and south, meaning top of the key, cut through some motion offense. So you're not putting so much pressure on your ball handlers to try to get past these bigger guards of UConn. Sweatman matched up with Cole. Gaffney, an open look from the corner. Rattles How about that? So no one knows he has a size advantage. He's hot down low. Unselfishly finds a teammate on the wing. Good hustle by Scantleberry, but he gives it right back. Another open look for three. Back to back. This one from RJ Cole. And Patrick Sellers wants to settle things down. Villanova number four, Gonzaga the preseason number one by a wide margin, followed by UCLA after that magical run to the final four. Now if you go further down that pole, Donnie, the only other Big East team in the top 25 preseason are these UConn Huskies. Another turnover picked up by a couple. Good hustle again. To Gaffney, UConn doesn't need those breaks right now. Tyrese Martin laughing a little bit. And those are some of the plays, even in a game like this, that UConn didn't necessarily get last season. You'll take those as a coach because so many times the ball bounces the wrong way. A cook pestering defense along the baseline. Here's Martin in the paint. He'll keep it himself this time. Tyrese Martin. Love the slash, changing the hand. Body control. Tyrese Martin found his way through the middle of last season to slow the game down when he caught that ball going to the rim. 11 turnovers already forced by this UConn defense. Sweatman trying to use his speed is bumped by Cole. And this is what UConn basketball. <laughs> around this campus I said coach this isn't the re the food isn't the reason i came here all the way from seattle that's for sure good dairy bar but after that slim pickens probably more options in jersey city <laughs> yeah just a few Denavi working against sunogo here's mitchell trying to get on track Run out the shot on Mitchell, aware that was winding down. 
two assists for Central. Now I understand that the defense has been really, really solid for UConn, but you have to move the basketball. I'm sure Pat Sellers will tell his guys at halftime, listen, you're over dribbling. You can't do that against a long defensive team. Two assists against 12 turnovers inside for Jackson. He's fouled a couple of ways. Looked like Andre Snotty underneath. Rasul Diggins, meanwhile, has checked in for UConn. Pat, and it's something little, but it's Sonogo making a nice soft lob pass from the three-point line downstairs to Andre Jackson. Most bigs, you don't want making that pass, but it shows you a little bit about the touch and the confidence that Adama Sonogo has. Earlier, caught it down low, two guys, kicks it out for a three to the wing. So, you know, we start talking about these bigs and how they move and, and how they have feel, but what about the intelligence that we're seeing from Sonogo so far in this game? After his fast start inside, he's attracting all kinds of attention from the defense. And that's what you want. You want to be able to keep him on the floor, even if he's not scoring. Sweatman lost control inside. It was out of bounds. They're going to say it was awful. Central, so that's turnover number 13. And that's one of the issues that Swapman has. Terrific player, very fast, can get underneath the defense, but he gets downhill a little too deep. Great example there. You and I talked about it before the game. Where do you go once you get to the baseline? No, no one around to help you. Especially against this UConn front line. Yeah. Not a lot of uh, line of sight in there. <laughs> Jackson from the corner, passed on that open look. Diggins lets it fly. And a pile up inside. Sonogo hits the deck. Scantleberry hits the deck. It's going to be a foul against Trey Mitchell. Foul on Central number 11. Now, I'm Mitchell. never going to be upset with a player making an extra pass. First time Mitchell, but for a guy foul. like Andre Jackson, when you're up this big, I want to see him take that shot from the corner last year wouldn't even look at a three ball and that is Central probably one zero, of the things Joe that Ostrowski you know he has to work on something all-world athlete olympic style oh, athlete five, to Isaiah really get up Levy. great vision to pass it but he's got to be confident in shooting the jump shot he's a terrific oh. defensive player can guard guys all over the floor i still believe he's top three Greatest athletes to ever play on this floor. Top three. Top three. Say Scott Burrell one, Ben Gordon two, and then Andre Jackson. Just Olympic style athletes. Scott Burrell, big time baseball player. Wow. Pretty good company. Jackson shot just 17 threes last year. It was two for 17. Here's the double team against Ostrowski. And you see Jackson guarding Mitchell. Pesters him to a very difficult shot. But Mitchell went away from the screen, and now you got to use the screen against big defenders. Right down the lane, Martin hanging in the air. I just love his body control, Tyrese Martin. He's always under control. Again, you can see he's worked on slowing the game down around him. And what that entails is just reading the defense, understanding when to attack, when to rise up, take the bump. And there's the co-Big East Defensive Player of the Year from last season, Isaiah Whaley. I think these fans are going to be more excited about a block shot this season than they are about any other play on the floor. Great timing. It's a really good score in Christian. 2.6 blocks per game last season. He shared that honor, by the way, with Posh Alexander of St. John's as Ostrowski Joe hands Ostrowski. the jump. Hey, hey, hey. Whaley couldn't handle that one. A new season, new projections. Here's the preseason All Big East first team. Heavy representation from Xavier with Scruggs and Fremantle. Colin Gillespie, the preseason player of the year. Champagny led the conference in scoring last season. Nate Watson seems like he's been around here forever. A lot of veterans. 
super seniors on that list there, so it shows what the Big East is about. About the old guys. Gillespie seems like he's been around forever, too, for that matter. And one throw into the backcourt, another turnover wasn't deflected. Obviously, Gillespie injured right at the tail end of the regular season last year. And Villanova's run through the NCAA tournament was without their point guard leader. They gave Baylor all they could handle even without him. I think that's a nod to the respect that he has. Look at that little floater from Jackson. Love that. What's wrong with that? He has the ability to get into that paint. Soft touch. Backdoor Mitchell off the window. Plus one. Mitchell Jackson that time. Andre Jackson with the long stride. They're backing off of him. That, that is terrific basketball because there's no one in front of you to force you to shoot it. But you take the high percentage shot and then Trey Mitchell, he can do that. You know, I just want to go back to Nova a little bit. You get a top five ranking preseason. That's not only because your head coach is a Hall of Famer now, but it's also because has come back and the respect that not just that team but him as a player and a leader has garnered. But with that comes a lot of pressure. As you mentioned in the NCAA tournament, they played Baylor tougher than anyone. Man, without Gillespie. Well, they have to replace Jeremiah Robinson at all. It's probably Cassidy. <laughs> Expectations can't be much higher than that. <laughs> Cole deflects that into the backcourt off the inbounds pass. Early returns for UConn, Donnie, pretty good. Yeah, and well balanced. Yeah, obviously, they're doing it on the defensive end. Central's not helping themselves. Over dribbling a little bit, but they're sharing the basketball. Andre Jackson. And he was working on that floater, Jackson was during shoot around today. It's two in a row he's just knocked down. That was a tough shot. And he has the bounce to get up over the defender, so that soft touch is so important when you get in the paint area because you're already above everyone. But the balance that you kind of shown, Earl has got to be happy. Selflessness, doing it defensively, not a, not a lot of mistakes. just hung in the air that time to block that attempt from my own. Well, hung in the air with, without fouling. They got to get it up. Straski checks the shot clock and fires from the wing. Now, if you look at the Big East preseason rankings, Villanova, UConn, top the charts. What sticks out at you there? It, it, the St. John's team, they're a team that, that really scares me. I think Butler's going to be Butler. They're bringing all their guys back, most, almost every one of their guys. But I think, again, that, that whole on paper, and this is not... And I've gotten a little bit of flack, but this is not my, it's not my heart, it's my basketball mind. I think UConn should be at the top of that list. I really do. Senior guard, R.J. Cole, transfer from Howard. Three things you need to know about R.J. His favorite band, the Jonas Brothers. He'd love to meet Rosa Parks, and well, he's here for the Huskies championship DNA. I'd love, after he answers that first question, for him to just give us his favorite song from yes. the Jonas Brothers. Just a little test. Just a little test within the test. 
And maybe even, can I get a line, just one line from one of the songs? Can you name either a Jonas Brothers song, or can you name a Jonas Brothers? Can. And I'm proud to say that I cannot. <laughs> Soul, R&B, blues, things like that, you know? You're an old soul. Yeah. Oh man, old soul, same thing, yeah. You're a popular guy here, I'll tell you that. Taking out dollar bills before you got here, just so people would come over and say hi to me. Tough step back. Jackson in McLaughlin's face, another shot clock violation. And this UConn defense has been relentless in the first half. You know, I still think Central can get into their stuff a little bit quicker. And maybe some of the hesitation is because they're not reading their options because of the hands in the passing lanes, the size of the defense. But if you get to your stuff just a little quicker, more popping of the passes instead of the, the extra one or two dribbles. That you can do nothing with. <laughs> Maybe bring a couple guys early, but on the offensive end, Central could be helping themselves a little bit. That's the 10th team foul against the Blue Devils. Donnie already 16 turnovers. Team foul, number 21, Adama Sonogo, shooting two. Adama Sonogo got them all to that great start inside. This is another part of his game that I think we're going to see continue to get better. Last year, just under 60%. But he's going to have to live on that line every day of the week because he's so big and so strong. The teams are going to try to double him and be more aggressive with him once conference play starts. That's 14 points scored by UConn. Cole pokes that away. Look at that defense just overplaying. Wow. There's a foul on the perimeter. Oh, no, With a balanced attack for the Huskies Sonogo. tonight. Martin, Sonogo, and Cole. Nearly first, first three in double yeah, fingers. Look at those shooting numbers, Don. Perfect, perfect, and perfect. Cole. Also, not assists, so they're moving the basketball. Also, nine assists, so they're moving the basketball. They're sharing it. But they're also taking their opportunities in transition, which allows a guy like Tyrese Martin to get those easy buckets at the rim. Snyder with a step away is blocked by a cook. Behind the back for a cook, the reverse comes up short. And he couldn't keep it in balance. I like Something the there from Diggins. I like the pass from Jackson. He sees it. Diggins slowed up a little to catch the pass. It actually delivered a pass to a cook that he, he maybe should have caught. Maybe a little bit of steam on it. I don't know if Dan Hurley likes it. You're never really going to like much from your, your freshman. <laughs> you got to make him earn every piece of it. Tough shot. Falling away by Krishna. And he draws the foul. Those behind-the-back passes are always tough to take a little speed off of. Especially when you're about two feet away from your teammate. First on Polly, six on the team. Polly's first foul. Central has 19 points, as you see. And 16 turnovers in this first half. Ian Christian averaged over 12 points a game his first two seasons. This is fourth year in the program. His points per game average dipped last year to 8.8. Sellers looks to build this program back up, says they need him to be more that 12-point-per-game guy. Now in year number four. Oh, he's on that all-rookie team. First year in. Got good, good kids on the team. Whenever you're building something, and you're, you just get there. You want good people. And I think he has that at Central. It's been a rough couple of seasons at Central Connecticut State. It is certainly a rebuilding project that Sellers is undertaking. Final minute here, first half, Gamble Pavilion. UConn has led from the outset. A couple of freshmen battling here, a 
Ostrowski around Diggins and a tough shot. Well, that's what I'd like to see Diggins back up a little bit. I understand the pressure. When you're young, you want to get into a guy handling the ball. Give him a little space. Timeout, Huskies. He's got the ability to block that shot if he, if he steps back. This is a central team. They have not had a winning record since the 2010-11 season. So when you talk about Pat Sellers got, has his hands full. Well, they've been in either last or tied for last in the Northeast Conference each of the last three seasons. A five second differential between the clocks. They're going to let Jackson create. Tries that floater one more time. This time it comes up short and it's going the other way. It was a good play, just a bad angle. Maybe one more dribble, lean, use the glass. I like that they're giving it to him at the end of clock, though. Swiping coast to coast just ahead of the buzzer. And that's the first 20 minutes of play. An impressive 20 minutes for UConn. It, there, there aren't enough words to, to, to tell you how much that got me into my life. Successful tenure as a head coach as well. He led the Blue Devils to three Northeast Conference championships. So we're underway second half. First half couldn't have gone much better from UConn's perspective and a foul right off the bat against Dari and Denavi. Foul on Central and the pro. And I, I know exactly what Central's thinking. Come out, be aggressive, but you want to be smart. Second on Denavi versus Denavi. First half started with UConn going inside to Sunogo early and often. And they do again, this time off the mark. First miss of the evening for Sunogo. And Martin's got some athleticism. Sunogo battling again inside and just muscles his way up there. Sunogo! I like that. Bigs in college so many times will, they'll look for the easy way out and that's throwing their arms in the air, acting like they got fouled, or they'll, they won't absorb the contact and Sonoma's showing you, you can take it. Well, he can take this one too! Oh, the basket! Oh. Big man stepping into the passing lane, almost came up with another one there. Just indecision by Central is the issue, and then you get leave guys out on an island and you don't give them an outlet. The UConn team really knows how to pressure you without fouling. They've shown that. Points off turnovers, an astronomical number. Nice shot by Krishnan for their first bucket of the second half. Martin spins his way. Find Sonogo, nice touch inside. Uh, uh, Sonogo. Yeah, a, a, another, another terrific read by Sonogo. Getting into an open spot, seeing your teammate might need an outlet. See that hefty field goal percentage number, 68% for the Huskies. Nice roll to the basket. Denavi can't finish. Jackson corrals it. UConn off to the races. A three on three. Lob up for Martin. Can't finish. He just took it away. Another open look. Jackson passed up on. Finds Sonogo as it poked away. And that's a shot you want to see him take. You got this big of a lead. This is the time to take those. And that is, again, it's, it's speed. It's athleticism. It's, it's the read to know you're not going to foul. When you go for the steal, it's also a, if you don't get that steal, you better not go for it. But he does, and then here, just too much finagling around with the basketball against a good defensive team if you're central. You can't play around with it. The ball's got to pop. Well, I mentioned the field goal percentage. Those were a couple of pretty high percentage shots. That's, yeah, not going to get much better than those. The 
Crossover by Cole into the jumper. That was smooth. And if I have to pick my mitts, I would say, listen, step back a half a foot and make that a three. But, listen, they got a big lead. They're feeling good. That's where the game's going right now, Donnie. Step back and take that three. Not only where it's going, it's where it's at. Double team here against Ayungma. Shot clock at one. Scantleberry's got a fire. It's an air ball on a turnover. Now RJ Cole hit that last step back jumper. And he's their top returning scorer from last year. Obviously, James Booknight, their leading scorer, onto the NBA. The one question people have about UConn is who's their go-to scorer in the offense? Is that a role that R.J. Cole can fill? Without question, but I think teams are scarier when they don't have that one alpha male, if you will. If they have two or three guys that can really hurt you, especially when you got an inside-outside punch. A young, ball. a young ball along the baseline. Is that how you see this UConn team? Multiple options? Absolutely. I, I don't see a guy out here that's going to just take over a game. And that is scarier to me if I'm a coach trying to figure out where my matchups are going to come from. Offensive foul, illegal scream against Sunogo. Turn on that scale. I, I'm just telling you right now. <laughs> I'm 240. There's no way he and I are the same size. He, he's uh, a monster out there, but lean. I get it. Muscle weigh more than fat. I'm told. Okay, so I don't have a lot of first hand knowledge these days. Muscle. But man, oh man, he is a specimen and knows how to move it around down there. Shot by Christian. Here's Jackson. Oh. Full saw that developing at about the foul line. <laughs> you know, what you love about that is Danny Early has given Andre Jackson the opportunity and the, the green light to, to handle the basketball, to, to break out. He does have great ball handling skills. He has great vision. Decision making will come the more he plays and the more he has that ball in his hands and obviously the athletic ability. Well the athletic ability is the thing that jumps out. And that is such a huge skill to have on the defensive end. What I love most about Andre Jackson is he has the tools that you can't teach. The vision, the anticipation, and obviously the, the leaping ability. Off the curl, lays it off for Whaley. Seeing a little bit of everything from Andre Jackson today. Now, shooting is obviously not Jackson's strength. I mentioned before, two for 17 from downtown last season, but you can teach someone to be an effective shooter. It's hard to teach someone a 45 inch vertical. I, I, Andre, I'm sorry if I'm. Short change in the I don't know. <laughs> if you can teach him to shoot. New season always brings some old faces in new places. Some big names moving on, including one in the Big East Conference. Shaka Smart from Texas to Marquette. Trying to take that program to the next level. I'm excited about that. Shaka Smart is not just a terrific coach, but probably an even better person. The Big East has always, to me, represented best by their coaches. You know, the, the not just the fiery guys, but it's the personality of, of what our league has been. Whaley off the curl, that's a goaltend. Snotty got up. A little, a little too late. Some athleticism there from the freshman Andre Snotty. He's a guy that Sellers is high on, can do a little bit of everything offensively. Here he goes, Jackson again. He's got Whitley trail. 
going. He's not worried about that. His heel was about seven and a half feet off the ground. <laughs> this, this is how special he is athletically. We don't really show misses. No, we, this is the <laughs> second one we're doing. First off, Jackson, third on the team. Another two That's a great call. It's, it's, it looks pretty, it's whether so it goes in or not. <laughs> Here's Sweatman back in the game. Backup point guards matched up. Jalen Gaffney. You gotta close these gaps. Central continues to make those long passes. I believe they haven't learned their lesson with the length that's in front of them defensively. You gotta close the gap a little bit. I mean, they're struggling just to make the pass from guard to guard some 30 feet from the basket. Gaffney's third foul. It's on the floor. Samson Johnson. There's Samson Johnson, another member of that four person freshman class for Danny Hurley. These are those games where I never got into foul trouble. I was like, I'm staying on the floor. Get yours. Hurley had those stats. That's good work right there. Elbow. That's saying. Best athletes we've ever seen in a UConn uniform. Andre Jackson give you a little bit of the floaters. Special passing ability. Feel for the game when it comes to that. You just don't want him to get too caught up in you gotta be a shooter, you gotta be a shooter, you gotta be a shooter. If he's a scorer, that's fine. He'll he'll be able to make shots. But more importantly, he's forcing Danny Hurley and the staff to keep him on the floor because he does so many great things. First on Johnson, fifth on the team. Samson Johnson picked up his first foul a moment ago. Here's Snotty right to the basket, and there's Johnson's second foul. Good aggressive move by the freshman, Andre Snotty. Yeah, Andre. Down low. Dare I say, get Snotty. That's his D's. Six, not T's. That's correct, but be clear. I had to check my head when I got headed. Snooty. <laughs> Long Island native. Went to prep school in Connecticut at St. Thomas More. Can't finish the three-point play as a cook grabs the rebound. 68 to 32. So UConn has doubled them up and then some. As Polly took it to the basket that time and that's something you want to see more of this year. Yeah, I mean, when you shoot over 90%, from the free throw line like Polly did last year, you, you want to see him get Third there more now. There's a fine line though because you understand how good he is on the perimeter and how much pressure he's going to be able to put on teams and keep the floor spaced. And you can play him at three different positions, two, three, or four, but you don't want him to abandon the fact that late game he will be able to win games for you, not from behind the arc, but from that strike. He's a career 74% free throw shooter. Excellent shooter from the perimeter as well. 38% from downtown. Well, you look at this UConn front line, and this is their backup front line. You have 6'9 out there, you have 6'10, and you have 6'9. And this is the backup front line as Ostrowski cans a three from the corner. Symmetry on your scoreboard there, 70 to 35. Con with twice as many points as the Blue Devils right now. Lob for a cook, and he's fouled going up by Snotty. Foul number 21. Oh, I remember Snotty. being in these games and people saying, oh, you got garbage minutes, garbage minutes, and, and literally those words are spoken by people who've never played the game because in a game like this, coaches believe there are no garbage minutes because what guys like a cook are getting out of this, Tyler Polly, I mean, everyone on the floor for UConn right now is getting something out of this, this big lead. You got to get more time. 
All right, Donnie, here's some candidates for the Big East Player of the Year. Obviously, Gillespie, the preseason player of the year. Who sticks out to you? Uh -oh. You know, my, my favorite here is Julian Champagne. Just because of his size, what he did last year scoring in the Big East, he's so versatile. Tested the NBA waters, made the right decision. I think, look, he could have gone and gotten paid, but if he comes back and has the season like he had last year, he's going to be a very, very wealthy young man. Just like what he brings to the table for St. John's. Jared Roden, meanwhile, game time decision for Seton Hall in their opener tomorrow night as he's battling an ankle injury. All UConn. Toughest guys I have ever played with, played against, and that's including in the NBA. Ron Solomon. I don't know if I've ever met anyone tougher than him. A rugged 6'9 center. Ron averaged 12 points and almost 9 rebounds as a senior, and also with the Huskies in field goal percentage. Like a 7'3 wingspan. Hands were, he, I could, he, he was just a specimen. And then you got Pat, who's just one of the nicest guys to do anything for you. Very mild manner. Very mild yes. manner. Good defender in his own right, though. Former defensive player of the year in college. Told me he could guard one through four. Any video of that? He did not present it. <laughs> There's a call again, oh, lighting it up from downtown. Yeah, it's always nice for coaches to see, you know, you go one in, you get a stop, but then you run your stuff that you talked about out of a timeout, and you run it to perfection. Bulls got 15 points tonight. Averaged 12.2 last season. For a MEAC player of the year with Howard. Here it comes. Here's a mischief tonight, by the way. Let's look inside. A put can't finish. Sonogo, he's been finishing all night. Sonogo. It's really a great job. Sonogo getting in there, digging that ball out without fouling. It's, it's such a hard spot for a guy that big with the little guys underneath you to not foul. Such a great opportunity for RJ Cole to be here as the starting point guard as he's often running in front of the pack. Again, hasn't missed yet tonight. Said he transferred in here because of UConn's championship DNA. Called it his dream school as a Saw what he can do defensively. Stretch you out, stretch four, if you will. A lot of options for Danny Hurley. If a cook, a cook can get back to what he was two years ago, how big of a difference does that make for UConn? Well, it, it, to me, it makes them the team to beat in the Big East. I know people love Villanova and, and Colin Gillespie coming back, but and this is not just, this is a small sample size this game, but on paper, the size, the length, what they can do offensively. You got to think about UConn. You really do. Pick to finish second in the preseason poll. So people thinking highly of them. Gaffney too strong. Sonogo still battling out there. Great job spacing out. The cook a cook understands when that guard drives, he's going to attract your defender. Give yourself some space. Make sure you get behind that three point line. Good debut for a cook getting his feet wet again after an uneven last season. And there's a career high for Adama Sinogo with 18 points. On a nice, healthy field goal percentage. Also, and and this is interesting. Look how big this team is right now for UConn. Danny Hurley's experimenting. And Andre Jackson running the point. It's six seven at the point. Six seven at the two. Here we go six nine at the three. A couple of six tens, four and five. Wow. Not many teams in the Big East can roll that kind of line down. <laughs> usually the backup point guard. Jackson. 
Brooks and getting a little tricky there. We won't see this lineup a lot, especially because this guy, RJ Cole, has really shown that he can lead this team. Last year, he did the same thing alongside of Buck Knight, but when they needed him to make shots, he did. Tonight, really good balance by RJ Cole. Not forcing the issue, finding his guys, knocking down shots. Has it missed, that's 15 points. Two-man game inside, blocked by Sonogo. Shot clock at two, so Mitchell's got to heave it up there. And another shot clock violation forced by the Huskies. That's turnover number 23. Yeah, that length. And in my notes, I have Pat, this team, this UConn team, at about 6'6", would put them ahead of the Miami Heat, the Philadelphia 76ers, Phoenix Suns, and Utah Jazz in terms of size, height. <laughs> Not only four NBA teams, but four top-level NBA teams. Yes. In and out. And he's going to get plenty of opportunities to knock that down. Well, we've been impressed with what we've seen from UConn so far tonight. Here are some other contenders in the Big East. Obviously, Villanova, you mentioned St. John's. They're a team that I don't think a lot of people enjoy facing. Xavier always in the mix. Seton Hall during this era under Kevin Willard is always in the mix. Tell you what, though, Tra Travis Steele, the job that he's done. Look, he's got the, the potential, and that Xavier team has the potential to do some special things. They are big. They bring some guys back, some really, really good players back. I'm excited to see Xavier play this season. Zach Fremantle, first team preseason all big East to miss the first part of the season, though. UConn has doubled them up again. Sonogo using the left. Martin and now Whaley. They just keep coming at you. The miss, the tip, the tip. Well, it's the combination, it seems, of the size of UConn and their relentless pressure on defense. Krishnan pulls up. Jackson with a head of steam gets it back. And a foul against Trey Mitchell. It has been all UConn from start to finish. And they're having a lot of fun. <laughs> one one. It's quite a legacy here in stores, Connecticut. It's kind of what tonight's been all about. Great fan yeah. base. Back in the Big East last year, the fans couldn't come and enjoy that and be a part of that. I know this isn't a Big East game, but UConn now a Big East team playing once again in front of a packed house here at Gamble Pavilion. This seems right tonight. When you think about the team I just gave you, I wouldn't get a lot of touches on that team. With Chris Smith, which for the record, Chris Smith, his nickname was Smitty Bop, and it was B-O-P, which meant bailout pass, because that was the only time he was passing anybody when it was a bailout. That's true. We still call him Smitty Bop. Oh... I'm looking down at your phone, seeing if the <laughs> text message oh, yeah, is going to come gonna through. Be Any minute now. Zach Newkirk, three. Zach Newkirk knocks down that three. Jackson's been involved in a lot of the offense tonight. Here's a three from Martin from the corner. Martin. Tyrese Martin's terrific night continues now with 14 points. There's a block from behind by Isaiah Whaley. It starts the break. Gaffney using his size inside, and that's an offensive foul. 
Opening night for both of these teams. Here's what's ahead for the Huskies. Coppin State on Saturday. That'll be in Hartford at the XL Center. Back here in stores next Wednesday for Long Island University. And then you see Auburn, Michigan State, or Loyola. That is the upcoming battle for Atlantis, Paradise Island in the Bahamas. So some early season tests there. the ninth block for UConn. Diggins down the lane and nowhere to go. Here's what Patrick Sellers and Central Connecticut State have coming up. An Ivy League matchup with Brown. Another Power 5 conference, NC State. Back to back with UMass Lowell after that. Going to be important for Pat Sellers to keep his guys confident to come off of a, a game like this. You know, you want to get these guys taken in sections, I would say. And then for UConn, you got to keep those guys engaged as well. They're playing some teams that on paper they're much better than. You can't afford any slippage this early in the season, especially when you got Auburn looking at you. Maybe Michigan State. Maybe Michigan State. I asked Sellers playing his first game as a head coach here obviously he's got special feelings coming back there i said what did you think about that it's, it's a hard game because i'm excited to come back but it's a hard game for game number one and, and not probably most of it is hard not on the physical side but on the mental side when you look up at the score now you're talking to your team after the game and trying to find out and let them know the good things that have happened and find out where they are mentally a lot of these kids play basketball in the state of Connecticut. This is it for Connecticut basketball right here at UConn. Be honest. <laughs> <laughs> you know, Danny also mentioning that last year coaching in the more casual attire, it just didn't feel right to him. He said something was off just the way he felt on the sidelines. And he also mentioned just kind of out of respect for the profession of coaching, he just felt right wearing the suit he also said that could change i never understood the suit thing i i, I wish they did like bas baseball used to do not so much anymore they've just suggested what everyone because they look really sharp they do kamani I mean, looks good not saying that danny doesn't but <laughs> he's got the pocket square I don't know going. If he looks as good as that i gotta be honest <laughs> You know, Danny also mentioning that last year coaching in the more casual attire, it just didn't feel right to him. He said something was off just the way he felt on the sidelines. And he also mentioned just kind of out of respect for the profession of coaching, he just felt right wearing the suit. He also said that could change. I never understood the suit thing. I, I, I wish they did like bas baseball used to do, not so much anymore, but... The basketball coaches have to wear the same uniforms as the players. You want Danny out there in a yeah, top and yeah, shorts? absolutely. Or maybe even a warm-up. He was running around during shoe run. He was with the jersey on. He was. He was on the scout team. He was <laughs> dropping some threes. I, I, or at least I, I, shooting, I, I, <laughs> shooting some threes. <laughs> I, I, listen, he did knock one down yesterday. Go that far. <laughs> That UConn Seton Hall rivalry never really dies down. Sloppy play here. Who's going to be the beneficiary? Diggins couldn't handle it. Wait, sloppy play on both ends. Diggins finishes his first two points for the UConn Huskies. Block inside, but a foul. Richie Springs thought he had the block. This is the fun part of the game. This is where the crowd starts to chant for the walk-ons to get an opportunity. Yeah. First round Springs. There's Matt Gary. 
And Danny Hurley's son, Andrew, the two walk-ons on this UConn team. Yeah, this is when the real pressure kicks in for the coaches. Students. Got the crowd chanting, we want such and such. I heard some, we want Gary chants. Matt Gary, a senior from Southington, Connecticut. <laughs> My high school coach actually showed me something that the crowd's yelling, we want, let's just say Timmy, we want Timmy, and he told Timmy to come down and sit next to him and said, hey, go see what the fans want. <laughs> That's just mean. Uh, just so mean. <laughs> he ended up putting him in, but. <laughs> mm. Nice move by Gaffney to the basket. Little run out here for Amba. <laughs> Gary is headed to the scorer's table to the delight of this crowd. I think it's another part of the game we missed last year. You know, the crowd cheering for not just their starters, but their, their, the entire team. So walk-ons went in the game last year. There was really eh, not much fanfare. <laughs> Holly with the finish. Danny Hurley calls a timeout to get his walk-ons into the game. Even if you weren't tough, it made you look tough. And yeah, that was my, uh, that's the reason I did it. Yeah, the cut sleeves underneath, because that yeah. was very necessary. Yeah, you just had, it was, I mean, you know. That added a necessary layer. But the Fab Five had the black socks and the black shoes, so a couple of us had the ripped shirts. It worked. In New York City, the influence to that was Felipe Lopez, who did that at St. John's at the same time. Was that Technicolor? How did they find a color video of that? That was way back in the 1900s, Pat. Steve Shear, our producer, and Eric Singer, our director, they got all kinds of stuff <laughs> going on in our truck. Great crew working opening night with us. All right, so the walk-ons are in the game. Now, the fans want them to get a shot, but there's an offensive oh, wow. foul against Diggins. And, and it really one of those situations, it's a blowout game for UConn, but Diggins is playing like a freshman. Nothing's really gone his way. A couple turnovers, maybe a little too fast. But this is how you want to have growing pains for your freshmen if, you're, if they're going to be there. Get it out of your system now <laughs> when you're up by 49. Yeah. There's a rebound for Andrew Hurley. And Gary, the fan favorite, little curly kneel exhibition there, but he can't corral it. It's a little too much. But again, this wouldn't happen last season. No. The crowd really inspires you at times to do the wrong thing, maybe over dribble a little bit. But th this is really what college basketball is all about in games like this. From the start of the night to right now, it was just a constant reminder of how great this game is. Right. Great atmosphere, the fans into it all night, happy to be here. Smiles underneath those masks. Nice pull up from Newkirk. McLaughlin on the offensive boards. Diggins to the basket, and Johnson follows it up. So opening night in the books for UConn. The start of the season with very high expectations, which I know they like around here. Gary battling to the final buzzer with Ostrowski, 99 to 48, your final score.